Hey everyone, welcome to Princess of Gay. I'm your host, Connie, and today we are here with a blind reaction to Tales from the Crypt Bordello of Blood. This is a donation reward from Sweet Venom. And little backstory here. So I have seen some of the series of Tales from the Crypt. Uh, I don't even know how many seasons there were, but I've, I, I kind of watched it just sporadically at times. Um, but I have never seen any movies associated with it. So, I know who the Crypt Keeper is, obviously. I know the general idea that these movies are kind of like... Not like the best horror movies or anything. I guess you would kind of say B-movies, but... It, it, it's meant, They're meant to be fun. They're meant to be fun and, and kind of silly. Um, a little over the top. Um, and so, I, I'm kind of interested to see what we got here. Now, Bordello of Blood. Let's dissect this, shall we? Because I, I don't actually know anything about this, but I can guess a few things based off the title. Um, or, or Bordello, for example, is a brothel. It's, it's straight up just a brothel. <laughs> So, if I do not see some titties in here, I'm going to be disappointed. <laughs> um, but in all seriousness, it's like, yeah, I, I expect nudity in this. Um, considering, you know, what that is. And blood makes me think of, you know, murder and shit. So, I'm presuming that there's going to be murders at a bordello, at a brothel. Um, the question is, who's going to be the, uh, the victims there? Is it going to be the customers? Or is it going to be the women, you know, servicing the customers who are going to be killed? Um, and what's going to, like, who who is actually going to be the bad guy and everything? And how is that going to work? And what's their motivation? Yada yada. All the questions that you would typically have for any kind of horror kind of thing. Um, the title doesn't make me think of like anything like supernatural or whatnot. But I mean, it could be. I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I, do, I just don't know what to expect going into this exactly. I have my thoughts, I have my theories based on the title, and that's pretty much it. I also don't know if there's going to be any actors or anything in this that I would know. I just have no freaking clue. Um, but I'm, I'm curious to see where this goes. I'm curious to see what happens. Um, so, we're just going to get into this. Hope for the best. Um, so, all of that being said, when the screen fades to black, pause this, redirect, and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black, then it fades back in. Everything for that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the movie. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So, first off, I was looking some things up here. Also, how the hell did that come up? <laughs> um, something else, something else came up. Ignore that. Um, I was looking some things up here because I wanted to check on some of these actors. Um, so William Sadler, who uh, I, I mentioned the name sounded familiar and everything. He was uh, the mummy, who we saw with the crypt keeper and everything. I was thinking the name sounded familiar and everything. I, I I wasn't thinking necessarily he looked or sounded familiar himself, but the name did. And so I'm looking up. I'm looking it up. Apparently, he was a character named Haywood in Shawshank Redemption. He was Matthew Ellis in Iron Man 3. And he was Death in Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. And Bill, and apparently the new one, Bill and Ted Face the Music. I haven't seen that one, though. Um, but yeah, he, he was Death in that. So that's probably where I, I, I recognize the name from. Because I've, I've heard people talk about him and that and... And that movie and everything so um but chris sarandon i also know i, I mentioned the names kind of sounded familiar as well he was uh reverend reverend jc current in this 
Um, and, and he definitely looked kind of familiar, but I could not for the life of me place it. I was just trying to think of it the entire time. He's fucking Prince Humperdinck from Princess Bride. He was also Detective Norris in Child's Play and Jack Skellington in A Nightmare Before Christmas. It's like, yeah, I very much know Chris Sarandon. It's like, I just didn't click, it, it didn't click with me. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at him, like, pretty much the entire time thinking, like, who is he? I know him, and I don't know from what. Um, and that was, it was definitely Prince Humperdinck, the, the one I recognized him for the most. Um, fun fact, though, um, it's funny, like, I mentioned that, like, his character was a reverend whose initials were J.C. because Jesus Christ. He played Jesus. The actor played Jesus in a television film called The Day Christ Died in 1980. That's really fucking funny to me. That this same actor played Jesus and then played a, 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 an over-the-top megachurch pastor. Well, maybe not megachurch, but an over-the-top pastor who has literally the initials of Jesus. <laughs> um... That's that's pretty damn funny to me. Um, apparently, he was also in the dub for Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. Uh, he was Kurotawa in that. Um, the the Ghibli movies though have a lot of pretty notable names in them. He was uh, he had a cameo in the 2011 Fright Night remake and was in the original as well. Um, yeah, he's he's been in quite a bit. Um. He was also apparently in an episode of The Wild Thornberries. That's fun. And an episode of Psych. That's really fun. And apparently he's in one of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles series. Which one is this? This is the 2017... or No, this is the 2012 series. Yeah, it's the 2012 series, the CG one. He was apparently in it in 2017 as Count Dracula, funny enough. Uh, another vampire role there. And he's voiced Jack Skellington also in Kingdom Hearts and shit too, and various other things here and there. Also, apparently he was in an Alanis Morissette music video. That's interesting. Um, but yeah, so, so I definitely knew him. <laughs> um, and Erica Ale Aleniak, who played Catherine... And Angie Everhart, who played Lilith, are both um, former Playboy models, by the way. Uh, just another fun little fact for you there, which very fitting for this movie. Um, apparently, Erica was also in E.T. and is known for her role in Baywatch. So that's pretty interesting. Um... Yeah, E.T. was actually where she got her start. Um, she had quite a few movies before this. She was in more recent stuff, too. Um, and apparently she actually played Marilyn Monroe, uh, or is going to be, in something called Marilyn Monroe Back, which, according to this, is in pre-production. So there's that. Um... But yeah, so that's pretty damn interesting. And yes, Whoopi Goldberg was uncredited. I was trying to find her, but she was she was just uncredited. Um, and the other writer of this, by the way, like I, I mentioned Robert Zemeckis, but the other writer, Bob Gale, is the other guy who wrote Back to the Future. Like they they wrote them together. Um, it, they were they they are legitimately filmmaking partners in that regard and so the fact that they made this uh together is just really funny to me because it's so different than back to the future in practically every way that's wild um and yeah there were some pretty pretty good songs in this and everything um, but I want to go. Uh, I want to go see what the critical reception to this is. So apparently, upon release, the film was actually poorly received. 
Leonard Maitland gave the film two stars, calling it a fitfully amusing juvenile horror comedy. Chicago Tribune reviewer Mark Carroll wrote, The crypt tradition is ghoulish, ir ghoulish irreverence, but here it seems merely a hip excuse to stoop low. And the D Desiree News wrote, For a horror comedy film to work, it's got to be both funny and scary. Tales from the Crypt presents Bordello of Blood is neither. Instead, it's only a bath of blood and bare skin, with some lame wisecracks thrown in for bad measure. Um, let's see here. Trying to see if I can find some positive reviews here. Um, the Los Angeles Times writer Jack Matthews gave the film a fa favorable review, calling it a bloody good vehicle for Dennis Miller's writing. What it lacks in irony and suspense, Gilbert Adler's Tales from the Crypt Presents Bordello of Blood makes up for in whimsy and cheeky self-assurance. This is the version of Dracula that Bram Stoker would have written with the collaboration of Mel Brooks and the Marquis de Sade over drinks at Hooters. That's a description. Uh, Arrow in the Head also reviewed the film favorably, giving a score of 6 out of 10, writing, This second entry in the Tales from the Crypt big screen series doesn't fully measure up to its predecessor, which I assume is the other one you uh, requested of me, uh, Venom. Um, it doesn't say here, but I assume. But still manages to deliver a mindless fun ride. ComingSoon.net wrote that Bordello is in many ways a superior Tales from the Crypt entry. Adler has previously directed episodes of the show, and the film feels like an amplified episode. Brightly lit, garish, and tricked out with even more sleaze, sex, blood, and general luridness. The Digital Bits wrote, Despite itself, Bordello of Blood is a fun movie. It's not the best in the Tales from the Crypt series, but it's miles above something else. It kind of like cuts away. Sure, there are plenty of eye-rolling moments, but it's worth a couple of watches, especially to see William Sadler as a mummy. The film holds, and as always, keep this with a grain of salt because it's Rotten Tomatoes, holds a 15% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes based on only 34 reviews with the average rating being 3.33 out of 10. The consensus states, Bordello of Blood is not as scary or funny as it thinks it is or should have been, and all of Dennis Miller's lines sound like cast-offs from his stand-up material. So, yeah, seems like a lot of negativity uh, basically being thrown around towards this film. Um... And so I think it's up to me to say that this was bloody fantastic. That this was on the same level as Elvira, Mistress of Darkness for me in terms of how fucking fun it was. Um, the one thing it has over that, though, is it actually shows titties. Like, Elvira, we got some good look at the cleavage and shit. It's like, we, we saw some titty, but not bare titty. And that's what this movie definitely had over it. Um, but in terms of writing, comedy, just overall enjoyment and all, it was pretty pretty even, I would say. And that's a really good thing. In fact, I actually think it might be just a little bit better, um, if I'm being honest. Like, Elvira, very iconic and everything. Her, her sass, her, her goofiness. Like, yeah, you, you can't go wrong with that. But this felt more like a more cohesive story i would say um on top of that the actors hammed it up in the right way like the, the ham the cheese like we're making a sandwich here and it is a damn good sandwich it, it's the kind of sandwich that you remember having in okay i'm not going to finish that because that would have actually been a really weird line to say i'll just say it I was going to say, that's the kind of sandwich you remember having at lunch in, in school and everything, but it's like, okay, we're talking about a movie with a lot of nudity in it, and it's like, maybe not the right thing to say. <laughs> um, but I, I was trying to make a joke there. I, I hope you got the joke anyway. <laughs> um, but seriously, this was fun. And I don't know what a lot of these people were like talking about. Like This was extremely funny. There were a lot of scenes that were extremely funny. Like the, the ballroom blitz scene where they're using the super soakers filled with holy water to take down the vampires. It's like, that was, that was fucking brilliant. That was genius. It was so fucking hilarious. 
Like, I was stunned with how funny that was. And the effects were ridiculously goofy and everything. Uh, mind you, uh, for the time this came out, let's see, when, did, when exactly did this come out again? I looked it up before, 96. That sounds about right. For 96, yeah, I, I would say that. That sounds about right. Um, and, and again, it's like, this was just really fun. Again, the actors were so over the top that it was, it was absolutely ridiculous. But they did it in a way that made it entertaining. Because you've probably seen plenty of movies where actors are over the top in a bad way and it just feels like too silly. And, and it kind of takes you out of the experience. But you can do over the top well. And I think that they did this well here. And I think having such a good cast helped with that. Like, Corey Feldman was pretty damn good in his role as Caleb, um, both pre-turn and after he became a vampire. I think Dennis Miller did great as Rafe Gutman. I, I think he was genuinely really good at playing this sleazy, over-the-top, uh, like, bad boy private eye. I think that was a fun idea. Uh, both Erica and Angie, they did great in their roles as the main leading ladies of this. Um, Catherine was very clearly like meant to be like this kind of victim of a over-the-top, almost cult-like church. Um, and Lilith obviously very much came across as an excellent sexy Lilith type character like getting to see her like she she really made it work as Lilith um and, and everyone else in here like even just like the girls the the bordello girls were just great um and not just because they were fucking hot <laughs> um that that helps sure but they they really sold their roles like they they not only felt like they were appropriately sexy and, and appropriately seductive, but they genuinely felt like, like they were unnerving as well. Like something was very off. And not just because you go into this knowing something's going to be off, but the, the, the acting was just the right level of off. Um, and... Yeah, I, I thought it was just an absolute blast from start to finish. Um, I can dig a good horror comedy. And this one, I think, really nailed it. Um, I, I, I think it just really, really is that good. I, I don't know what any of these negative reviews are talking about here. I, I just, I don't get it. So, apparently... Reading this, though, uh, here's a fun little fact. After graduating from USC in 1973, so like 20 years before this film ended up coming out, well, 23 years, but Bob Gale and Robert Zemeckis wrote an early draft of Bordello of Blood wanting to break into the film industry by making an exploitation film about a whorehouse full of vampires. That is the funniest, the funniest thing ever. That Bob Gale and Robert Zemeckis wanted to break into the film industry by writing an exploitation film about a whorehouse full of vampires. Like, that's just, that's that's brilliant. That's, that's amazing. I love it. And apparently they pitched it to a producer in the 70s, but it, it, it never ended up going through. Uh, and, and the three of them, uh, including the producer, John Milius, they ended up making 1941 instead, which I don't think I know what that one is. Um, but Milius described the scripts for Bordello and another proposed film for the duo entitled Tank as being pretty darn good. Following the commercial success of Demon Knight, which that's the other one um, that's on the list right now, Universal Pictures greenlit two more Tales, film planning to, Tales films planning to make a trilogy. 
The original proposed second film was Dead Easy, aka Fat Tuesday, a zombie film set in New Orleans which never made it past the screenwriting stage because the producers felt the scripts leaned too heavily towards horror and lacked the series' humor. The producers also considered Quentin Tarantino's screenplay From Dusk Till Dawn as a possible Tales from the Crypt film, as well as Peter Jackson's The Frighteners. Dur during this development process, Robert Zemeckis was offered a contract with DreamWorks and considered leaving Universal. To appease him into staying with the studio, it was agreed that a revised Bordello of Blood be produced as the second film. So he was basically lured into um, agreeing to stay with Universal instead of going to DreamWorks by them saying like, oh, you wanted, there's this film you really wanted to make with your friend um, right when you started getting into this industry? Well, we'll make that. Come stay with us. We'll, we'll do that for you. That's funny as fuck to me. <laughs> And again, the fact that the fact that this has uh, the fact that this has apparently become a cult film, according to this, which I can very much see being the case. I, this is very much the kind of movie that would be a cult film. Uh, it shows that there are people out there who like it, that there are people who genuinely thought that it was fun and funny and interesting. Um. So I, I think that was pretty, pretty cool, pretty great. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, I, I thought this was really fun, and yes, it was very sexy. I like titties, <laughs> and also quite a lot of butts in here. Quite a lot, of, quite a lot of nice asses. Not really much of any uh, anything else shown. Like we didn't see any dicks or, or pussies or anything. Just just titties and ass, which fair enough. Like they can't go too far because then it would be like you know, not suitable um, in a lot of ways. Um, and the the rating would definitely have to change for that um, if they could even get it off the ground in that regard. But yeah. I thought it was I thought it was a blast. I thought this was uh really enjoyable, really good, um and, and honestly a really, really welcome surprise for me. I did not expect this to be as fun as it was. I, I did not expect to enjoy it as much as I did. I, I go into this thinking, oh, it's a Tales from the Crypt, uh it's a Tales from the Crypt movie. It's gonna have like this B movie cheesiness to it and everything, and it did. But it did it in such an entertaining way that it's just like, how did this movie end up being this good? It has no right to be this good. It's, it's, it, it, I was entertained from start to finish. I really was. So, yeah. Um, tell me in the comments below, what do you think of Tales from the Crypt, Bordello of Blood? And for now, uh, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.